Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're into number three of our HJet series and using SPAD.NX to configure a controller. In this one, we're going with the Honeycomb Alpha. Well, we're on the ramp here at the Ottawa Flying Club, and I see Fiez has come out to make sure nobody chips the paint on the brand new Golf Mike Tango Tango. Let's go ahead, hop inside, and see how it's set up to work with the H-Jet. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the yokes, just so we can see everything a little bit clearer. So in this one, we're gonna be working with the Honeycomb Alpha, and we'll be able to see how the buttons and switches have been mapped. You get to make your own profile and then import all these devices that I've been creating. That way, you don't have to get stuck with things exactly the way I do it and only bring in the pieces that you may have as well. So inside of SPAD.NX, you'll see I'm running 0, 9, 12, 50. Uh, this is the alpha version. Again, you have to be on a paid uh, license, not a trial to access the alpha. Uh, also, very soon, alpha will move into beta and then release, so it'll also become available. So under settings, that would have been in your application settings, expert, alpha, close, restart and make sure that you follow the instructions because you have to link it in the discord as for devices the alpha is just a standard uh, joystick device it shows up under joysticks make sure it's enabled that way if it sees the alpha it'll offer it up to be configured first things you'll note when you come to your joysticks You'll find it in your list. I got mine to the top because under device settings, I renamed the device and changed the sort order. That way, when I do this video, I don't have to keep finding it in the list. The other thing I've done is I've reset my standard configuration. One of the problems that we have is if the buttons aren't configured the same, um, you can't publish these snippets. Now, there's also a difference from the way we used to run things in that you can do everything we needed now with the standard button. So normally what you would have done is come here under device settings, under global, and you would have seen some of these I had made simple because that way I could do repeats. Some of these I made a switch because I wanted a switch on, switch off event. Now, some of these I also disabled because we didn't need the button at the bottom of the switch since we could use switch on off. I have no longer disabled those. That way I can publish, but it means I'm also not hiding them. So there's a lot of extra buttons, uh, but we don't need them. For those of you that are looking to grab the snippet, now that you're on the alpha or this is in the future and we're beyond uh, that version, what you need to do is go to your joysticks, your controls, go to your alpha, click on a button, come to online snippets, When you're in online snippets, you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna find complete device for the alpha flight controls. You're gonna type in HJet, and you're looking for the one done by me, uh, 5813, Microsoft Flight Sim, HJet, Honeycomb, Alpha, Yoke. Now, keep in mind, if you don't see this, it could be you're in a different livery. So if you check the only for current aircraft off, then it'll make sure to show for any aircraft that this has been published for. So again, if I don't have that livery that you have, you won't see it without unchecking the only for current aircraft. You'll see the information, go ahead, click on it, and then replace all events, we put yes. And just like that, 
you now have the same thing as I do. Let's run through what we've configured and where it is on the device. Now you can always enable programming mode. So first let's bring in our camera and what we mean is this little button on the left, right? If I enable programming mode, now whenever I press a button on the alpha anywhere, the UI is going to switch and display what's assigned to it. So if you're having a hard time figuring out which button or switch is where, use this mode, enable it, and then once you get to it, you can disable it so that you don't have to worry about pressing other buttons on other devices and the UI jumping to those. So first up, let's talk about button one. Button one is on the back side of the yoke. This is your push to talk button right here. So as always, I map these to a VJoy event, and that's because I want to be able in vPilot to have any of my yokes or joysticks have its button mapped without me having to constantly go and change it. Uh, there's videos on the VJoy. I suggest you watch those if you want to understand how to install a VJoy and use it. But effectively, when the button is pressed, it is going to hold down that VJoy button, which in vPilot is mapped as my push to talk. And when I let go, it will release it. Thus, all of my devices, joysticks, yokes, all are able to do push to talk without any more remapping. Button number two is the white button right here on the left horn. And with it, I've mapped it that on a short press, it is going to turn the autopilot off and send the yaw damper on command to turn the yaw damper back on. I did this previously because of a certain other business's jet um, that was kicking off the yaw damper. So this was a way to turn off the autopilot and then 200 milliseconds later, when that took the yaw damper offline, we'd stick it back on. Then when we hold this button for a second, it will send the, yaw, uh, the autopilot off and it would also kick out the yaw damper. That way you have best of both worlds. You could exit the autopilot early, still fly with the yaw damper and then hold it as you got closer to where you wanted to kick off the yaw damper and get full rudder authority. Button number three is the white button over on this horn. And this button is set to send the Honda Jet Enter H event. And for a long time, it's going to send the Honda Jet Long Enter event. Now I've shown how to do client events before, but we'll jump over to add-ons, come to client events. And what you'll see is I added some client events. These are HVARs. So first up, what you're gonna see is I made this a scope of profile. So it'll load with my profile, which means unfortunately, you're going to have to enter these yourself to make them available. So all you have to do is come in, you hit the add client event and you can make it global so it's always available or profile. These I'm making a profile because they're only going to come on with my HJet. You give it a name. Now if you want it to directly reflect my settings then this one needs to be HJT enter where the HJT are all capitals and the E is a capital. Then what you're doing is you're entering the event. This is basically the H event as it is. So it's a H colon gauges underscore HA420 underscore sys underscore checklist underscore enter. Now I created a category of H jet. That way I can sort these a lot easier when I'm doing the assignments. I will find them under the 
MSFS events, and then there will be a separate section just for HJET events. For the long enter, holding the button for a long time, it's the same method. Give it the name, gauges underscore HA420 sys checklist long enter HJET category. And then we're going to want to do the same thing for a scroll up and the same thing for a scroll down. Uh, these two events actually are not needed. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete them. So you do need those so that these checklist events will work. So now this is going to let me step through the checklist or hold it for a long event so that it will toggle from checklists out to your last system page that you were on. So that way you don't have to go to the right TSC screen to toggle the screen. And we'll see this when we're running through these events. Button four is up here. It's our red button. I thought might want to give you the um, cast message warning um, reset button, so the master caution push button. So not only am I going to use it to reset the master caution and warning for the HJET LVARs, so these are HJET LVARs, so they're found under the LVAR, but I'm also canceling the generic master caution and warning LVARs, just because I have places where I flash LEDs for those and it was kind of bugging me that still under the hood somewhere uh, those are going off when we reset the HJET ones. Button number five is actually the first rocker over here on the left hand side. As always I treat this like a split trim and what that means is we're using a condition. So that condition is to check that button seven which is the up over here is also pressed or set to one. So as long as that's red, or sorry, seven's down. As long as that's red, then when I pull this one down, we'll get the trim up event. Perfect, so both have to be pulled together. One won't function, just like a split trim should do. So you'll see for six, similar thing, only we're checking button number eight. If it's a one, no problem. Go ahead, send the trim down event. Seven and eight, because I'm using these just as split trim, are blank. Nine is the top rocker switch over here, left and right. So nine is going to be the Honda Jet scroll up H event that we created under client events. 10 is going to be the scroll down event. So now we can move up and down in our checklist just fine and then use the white button to check off the events. Of course, if you're just operating in standard mode and checking them off, you actually don't need to navigate up and down. You'll be able just to press the button and it increments as it goes. Button 11, these uh, 11 and 12 are the lower rocker switch. I didn't map those to anything. Button 13 is actually the top of the alternator switch. The bottom is 14 and we have nothing mapped to it. So what has happened now that we are able to do pretty much all event types or button types under the, the normal button, that's because you can now do button pressed. Button pressed is the same as switch on or the same as button pressed in a simple button. So if I want to treat this like a simple button or like a switch, I just use button pressed and button released events. So this is what's really cool about this is I no longer need to pick and choose how I want it to work. If I want something that's going to repeat or be a switch, I will use the button pressed because I can choose the event and if the nothing is modified, well, it's on, it fires once, that's it. If it's something like trim where I want it to repeat, 
you'll see that with that button pressed, but now we have, even though we're in normal mode, the ability to add repeat to the button for pressed events. So you still have the ability to do the different types. You just no longer need to change the button configuration. You decide based on how you map it. So here, when the button's pressed, we're going to turn both generator buttons using the LVARs on, and then when it's turned off, we'll turn them off. And again, 14's the bottom, don't need to use it. Yes, I could have had a pressed event here, turns them on, a pressed event here, turns them off. But I keep it in one place, because if I go to another switch, uh, that doesn't have a button on the bottom, I can copy and paste this. So think like on the Boeing TCA yoke, the landing gear only has one button. The up position turns the button on, the lower position turns the button off. So there is no two buttons. So 15 is our battery switch. And so we've mapped the battery switch when pressed to master battery on and when released to master battery off. 17, we're going ahead and using the bus tie. So that's the H-Jet bus tie. Same thing, when it's released, it's a zero. When it's uh, pressed, it's a one. So switch on, switch off. 19 is our cabin power LVAR. So we can turn it on and off. Uh, so that's on the avionics bus two. So these are your power switches. As we've seen in the streams, we know that the lights are all auto normal. So they're normal and the jet does everything automatically. So yeah, we kind of don't map anything to these. And obviously you may have some ideas what else you want to map them to because you don't have other switches in your sim. Maybe you're going to repurpose those for the oxygen panel. Um, don't know. But what I've done is I've currently used the strobe for our ground power button. So the strobe being the closest one to here, I've put ground power there. 31 is the off position of the magneto key, the starter key uh, on the alpha. 32, because it's labeled R, I decided to put the right engine starter there. So what 32 is going to do is when it's pressed, so switched on, it's first going to check that the engine starter is off. And if it's off, it will send the toggle command. When it's released, it's going to check that the starter is on or that the starter is active. And if it is, it will send the toggle starter to toggle the starter off. 33, the left engine. So starter number one. And again, that's because you see it here uh, as L for that switch position. 34 and 35 have nothing mapped to them at all. On the axes, these I do inside a Microsoft Flight Sim because that it's an elevator and an aileron. They never change. That's what it's always going to be. And I sometimes like to double map so I can do drone stuff uh, using those axes as well because the sim will allow that you can double map it and if it's a drone thing It doesn't do a drone thing and if you're in the drone cam uh, It won't affect your flight controls the hat switch I also do not map inside of the sim and that's because or inside of spad I map it in the sim uh, just because those camera controls aren't exposed very well and again, I'm really never going to remap the, the hat switch. I'm always going to use it for the views. Uh, but that's also great for those of you who don't use it for that. Uh, it's ready to go. You can remap it to any function that you like.
Well, let's go ahead and use our controls now that we're ready to go. So first thing, of course, we're going to do is we're going to start or turn on the battery. And of course, this is the default uh, kind of startup state. The power is on. Uh, now, the batter the alternator or generators, their default position is in norm. So you'll see there, it started in norm. We turned it to off, off it went. So you'll see also ground power is currently available. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna turn on our ground power using that strobe switch. So now we've got our ground power. We don't have to worry about anything. Uh, we've got some cast messages. So again, that red button will clear out those messages. This is pretty cool. And as we said before, you could jump over to the TSC controller on the right hand side and jump to the home page to get to the checklists. But if we just press that checklist button once, it will toggle the checklist over to the checklist. Now we can go ahead and we can move through. So battery is on, oxygen, check, everything's normal. Pressurization is normal. Electrical is on and normal. Our ELTs in the normal position. Our nose wheel steering is normal. Landing gear is down, yep. And our alternate gear handle fully stowed in. So that's the red guy over here. Our parking brake is set. Flaps are up. Yes, flaps are up. Thrust levers are in the cutoff position. Our speed brake is retracted. Ice protection is normal and off. So on the Bravo, uh, we've got this set up. Um, on the switches, on the Bravo, but we're normal. And off here, everything else looks good. So up we come, and we're just going to continue with, that's good. Fuel panel, normal. Trim panel, checked and set. Windshield heat panel, normal. Pneumatic panel was normal, we checked it. Glare shield is dark, yep, because we silenced the cast. Chime, normal dark, yep, it's not set to mute. And avionics initialization is complete. We hit the check, we are good. Go ahead, head to the next checklist. So you can see, this is great. We got buttons, we're controlling our checklist. Uh, passenger briefing, who cares? Rudder pedals, yep. Seats and seat belts, doors. Parking brake is set, cast messages are reviewed. Electrical volts. Ah, so we need to switch over. If we hold that button, it switches over to our external status page. So we can go ahead, head on over to systems. We can go to electrical, and we can see our electrical, all good because we're pulling off ground power. Our battery 25.4, 25.4. So, so far, uh, we are good there. Uh, so electrical volts are good. Engine start. So we're all ready at the point to start our engines. So let's go ahead and we're going to put our starter into the right side. So we see that right starter start going. And now we just move out of... Just tilt down. We just move out of the cutoff. And it's going to go ahead and do the engine start for us. Now, because this has come online, you're also going to notice that the external power has been disconnected. So if we switch over, we can see that the external power is now disconnected. So we can also toggle that switch off or leave it on, but we'll toggle it off. Now that this has come online, you'll also see that the cabin power is currently offline. So we're going to clear our cast message. We're good. So let's go ahead now and start the left engine. Move it to left. Up it's coming. There it 
There it goes. Well pressure, N2, ITT, they're all rising. We're going to go ahead and clear it. Actually, before we even got to clearing it, it cleared on its own. So now we can see that the cabin power is still off. So we're going to use our avionics bus 2 switch because that's what we mapped to cabin power. That goes on. And for the bus tie, we're going to switch it into the up position because that's the normal position for these switches. And as you saw, nothing happened inside of the virtual cockpit. Looking at our trim pitch, you could see that display trim pitch is adjusting as we move the pitch. So that's pretty cool. That's taken care of for us. Um, hat switch again, not mapped here. So here's our autopilot disconnect. So if we just turn on the autopilot, so you see it disconnect and it keeps the yaw damper on, hold it down for long and it turns the autopilot and the yaw damper off. You saw the CAS, you also saw the awesome checklist. So engine started, engine instruments good, anti-ice as required, external power is disconnected and our flight controls are free and correct. So we'll go ahead to the next one. So before taxi, Wing anti-ice as required, transponder code, flight ID. I think you guys at this point get the picture. We didn't get off the ground today, but we did get it started. So that'll be ready for our next video where we uh, leave the Ottawa Flying Club and pick a destination. Maybe we'll go to Saint Hubert. As always guys, great that you clicked in if you could go ahead and smash that like button if you haven't please consider subscribing just check that red subscribe button as always thanks for watching have a great day